Matt and I go back quite a ways. Uh, uh, he uh, got some development funding and was convinced to bring me out there for about a week. And we just had a great time together. And of course, I just gave him all the stuff I could. And um, it was really interesting, Mike, because he, he left the law practice and, and uh, to go into coaching hockey, which he's done for how many years, Matt, now? Well, I mean, I, I started coaching in '91, but I, I, I've been coach. I've been with the Queens women's team since '06, so 17 years. Amazing. And Matt, correct me if I'm wrong. Is your wife a judge or a lawyer? Uh, was a lawyer, now a judge. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, all, so all could... the years you've gone into coaching and the the recruiting at the female uh, on the female side. I don't know that it's much different than the guys, except guys hockey, they appear to be automatically given scholarships because of their junior careers. But uh, now you've chosen a position. Can you describe the, the new position that you're taking over and how you feel what you've done is going to help you with it? Sure. Um, yeah, so... Um... I, tomorrow, as it happens, is my last officially my last day as head coach, and on Monday um, I start the new job as director of service strategy and external relations within Queens Athletics. And and honestly, the title begs more questions than it answers. <laughs> but uh, it it, um, it uh, yeah. Um, how do I get into it? So. Um, do you mind if I take a couple of minutes and just sort of lean into it, Wally, and just sort oh, of might help? Yeah, I'm curious. Yeah. So, so yeah. Thanks for that, Wally. And um, when I uh, there was a period of time before this job was full time, um, where I was both the head coach of the team and a practicing lawyer. And in 2011, Queens decided to make the job full time, and my my wife, um, who's a lawyer at the time, right away said, "Well, you have to do it. You have to. You have to." You know, I, I see how much, you know, passion and, and how much you love the coaching. And, and of course, the first thing I reminded her of was the uh, pay difference. And, uh, and she knew that and, um, and knew how much I loved it and, and was supportive throughout. And, and uh, so jumped ship, um, haven't officially practiced law since about 2012 and was doing this and have been doing this full time um, since 2000, technically 2011, I guess, full time. Um, and you know, it was busy, right. And, and, uh, we, we had our, our daughter, we have one child, she's 10 now. So born in 2013 and things were certainly busy. Um, we were doing our best to make it work. The pandemic hit and, um, during the pandemic, my wife was appointed as a, as a judge. Um, thankfully during the pandemic, I guess a lot of what she had to do was, was virtual uh, but as we get out of the uh, the pandemic, um, she's she's on the road quite a bit and, and pretty busy. Um, and the one thing also that the pandemic, uh, I think it's important to note is is I got involved in this group. Well, I think it was it was during the pandemic that uh, you and I reconnected and and uh, I got onto quite a few more sharks calls than I have been able to in the last year or so. And um, I actually remember one of the calls, and I don't know if it was Tim Bothwell, but someone we were, there was a there was a sharing of books that people were reading, and one of them was The Tough Stuff by Cody Royal. And I picked that book up and read it, and and honestly, it was in, in, incredible. And I'd recommend it to any head coach out there. And I, I was so moved by it by then. I actually reached out to the author, who's an Australian, uh, but he's now living in Canada. And he and Cody and I actually developed a, a relationship and, and um, talked quite a bit about coaching and, and uh, his whole um, philosophy, if I can be so dramatic about it, is, is just the holistic nature of coaching and um, making sure that coaches are taking care of themselves and, and uh, not getting burnt out and realizing that if you're, if you're truly looking after the, the full athlete, in my case, a student athlete, um, you need to lead by example and be looking after yourself as well, um, physically, mentally, family, all of it, right? And so uh, I think that, that that was a breath of fresh air for me as well. And to be honest with you, those are, those are principles that Wally and I have been talking about for years as well. Um, 
So last year was our first full year back. Um, uh, we had a we had a really good season. I implemented sort of a torpedo style offense, and and it was really invigorating. And I was I was really enjoying the coaching as well. But um, I I was finding it more than ever tough to sort of juggle um, trying to be the best coach I can be, the best father I can be, and the best husband I could be. And um, we lost our last playoff game. Um, it was a tight series, could have gone either way. And, uh, but because we lost the very next day, I was able to be at my daughter's swim meet and saw her win one of her heats, um, for the first time. And then the day after that, or shortly after that was her 10th birthday. And I remember having the thought, if we had won, um, I would have missed both of those things. And I had already missed a bunch of those types of things, um, over the last 10 years. And I, re- I had the real serious thought about, okay, how many more of these things am I willing to miss um, for coaching? And the universe works in funny ways. Um, just a couple of days later, my uh, the Queen's athletic director approached me about a, a, a job that she had been trying to fill thus far unsuccessfully. And would I be interested? And I think in any other year, I probably would have just said, thanks, but no thanks. And given it about five second thought, but given... Uh, given just sort of the place I was in, I, I opened my mind to it. And uh, after talking to her and, and a few others for a few weeks, um, realized that it was it was the right thing to do and the right time to do it. And um, so I still love coaching. I love this team. I have no issues with it. I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, angry with where I was or, or where the program was. Um, but you know, putting family first was was really the um, was really the driver behind it and getting this opportunity. So, what is it? Yeah, I, I'm actually still learning it a little bit. I think I think uh, it's going to be a bit of flying the airplane and building it at the same time. Um, but um, basically, if I can describe it in a nutshell, um, there are three main pillars uh, at, at Queens within the larger umbrella of Queens Athletics. There's the high performance side which I'm very familiar with and have spent the last 17 years in. There's the rec- recreation side, which is more intramurals and queen students at large that use the queen's facilities. Uh, and then there's the third, the third pillar is the, the third party users. So a club team from Kingston or, or other people that might want to use the facilities or use the resources at Queens and by service strategy director, basically I'm going to be the person that, that uh, comes up with the policy and the decisions as to um, which of those pillars get which resources at which time. So there's there's our facilities, there's our people, and there's our, our financial resources. And each of those pillars needs a um, slice of the pie. And so it's it's going to be managing that. So it's a lot about logistics within, within athletics, um, developing relationships within Queen's University and within the Kingston community at large as well, part of those relations. But there's also going to be a lot of policy building, a lot of contract reviewing, um, and so, uh, you know, I'm not being asked to be a lawyer again, um, but I'm being asked to, I think, bring forward some of the skills and experience that I had as a lawyer and marry those with 17 years embedded within the Queens athletics department and, uh, and try to help them out. So, um, that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. And, and really, you know, my circumstances are pretty unique. I was lucky that there was a job um like this that sounds interesting and challenging that i could transition into but i get to stay within kingston i get to stay within queen's university i get to stay within queen's athletics and uh um i'm pretty excited about that um certainly sad about leaving the the coaching field and realm uh, but the good news is i'll still have um i guess tangential uh dealings with with the high performance teams, there's still decisions I can make that can positively influence the women's program as well as the other programs. And I'll still be their biggest fan and probably going to quite a few home games as well. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. And, and, you know, um, ultimately I, 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 ultimately I said yes, not because it's a, a, you know, a job promotion or I'm chasing a salary or, uh, or a bigger office. If, if those were that important to me, I never would have left the law in the first place. It 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 really was a family decision. Um, my wife's getting busier and busier with her new career, and just like she supported mine 12 years ago, it's 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 a it's a cliche to use the hockey role, but or or the the hockey cliche, I guess, about 
you know, you got to change your role for the team, but that's kind of where I'm at as well a little bit and supporting her position as well. Um, so family wise for my own, I wouldn't say I was in danger of burning out, but there was, there was a bit of that. So for my own mental health, I, I have, you know, more control over my weekends, um, no more morning or evening practices or weekend games, um, which is good. Um, and I think the job is, is going to be challenging and I'm looking forward to it though, as I, you know, I transition into retirement, um, probably still a decade away, but and then lastly, when I think about coaching and when I honestly reflected back on my career, I'm, I'm proud of what I accomplished at Queens. Um, you know, uh, we certainly won more games than we lost and, and went to the nationals a few times and won a few provincial banners. Um, but honestly, I'm more proud of, of the people that have come through and, and the relationships I have with the graduated players and, and who they are now and what they're doing now. And, um, and the team's in a good spot. I'm not leaving a, a dumpster fire for the next coach. Whoever picks it up is is going to inherit a team that gets along really well, has a lot of talent and a lot of potential. And I'm I'm proud of what I'm I'm turning over. I suppose um, the way I described it to someone the other day was like I ran the third leg of a four by one hundred relay, and when I picked up the baton after the second leg, we were you know near the back of the pack, I guess. Um, and I ran a good third leg and I've brought, you know, the team to a good spot where we're, we're now competing for a medal top three, and I'm about to pass the baton off to somebody and put the team and program in a good place during, during my leg. And, and, um, you know, once I've come to terms with sort of that sort of thought about it, and I'm quite happy, I would, I would love for someone to take the baton from me and, and, uh, and, and improve things. And, and, um, you know, uh, we've been fortunate enough to get to nationals, you know, a few times in the last 10 years. And if someone can turn it into a program that that's going uh, every year, then then fantastic. I'll be proud of the leg that I ran. So. So that's uh, that's kind of it. And the natural and the last thing I'll mention, too, um, you know, I, I, coaching was such a, an ingrained identity of everything that I did and who I was. And, and even after I said yes to Queens, I was really, really. I was still kind of struggling with it and and have maybe not doubt, but, you know, struggling with the change of identity or possible change. And um, because I wasn't coaching anymore, I wasn't attending a, a tournament that I would normally scout out of town. And so my daughter was able to make her first basketball game. And I was able to take it to her, take her to it because my wife was out of town. And not only that, I was standing under the basket and she made her first basket. She turned around and smiled at me and then kept going down the court. And I, mean, I had the, the thought right away in that, that two second moment, I realized if I was still coaching, I, she would not have had that opportunity to play in the game. And I wouldn't have been there to see her score the basket. And in those two seconds immediately evaporated any sort of lingering or lasting doubt that I may have had about about making the change so you know i've still got some some uh i'm still a little scared maybe not the word but i'm still interested for what the job the new job is going to bring and the challenges is going to bring but I'm, I'm ready to face it but in terms of finally letting go of the coaching part of it um that that moment i think just sort of helped me 